the sutra says, all the things that are needed by the people in the pure land will be in abundance with no lacking. All the adorned things, such as palaces and beautifully decorated clothing, the fragrant, fragrant flowers, the banners and umbrellas will come forth just as one has wished or one has needed for. If a man wishes to take food, the seven precious bowls and containers which contain hundred kinds of food and drinks that are of all different tastes will naturally appear in front of him and are filled to the brim. The food, drinks, and containers will all disappear and to appear again when it's time for lunch. This is the sayings from the uh, Infinite Life Sutra. And we know a physical justification of this behavior in the pure land is that people in the pure land possesses highly advanced scientific power so that they create things out of energy if they need them and then convert these things back to energy. And the next topic is that the, about the origin, origin of the universe. In the quantum world, we see things appearing out of nothing all the time. Here, a quantum is referred to as the smallest possible unit of energy. The universe may have done the same thing, appearing out of nothing. Dr. Stan Aldenwald said, when physicists said nothing, they were pl being playful with the English language because we often think of the vacuum as being empty or nothing. In fact, physics now know full well that the vacuum is far from nothing. So before the formation of the universe, there was even no time or space or even vacuum. So the primary state of the pre-universe period was far from being the kind of nothingness we might have in mind. As uh, Stan Oldenwald acknowledges, we don't have a full mathematical theory for describing this state yet, but it was probably multidimensional. The nothingness that, are, that gives a rise to the present universe was not nothing, but it was not anything like the kinds of something we can think of today. We now have no words to describe it. And the ones that we borrow from the Oxford English Dictionary are based on the wrong physical insight. Buddha taught that the original state of the universe, referred as the true self-nature, neither comes from somewhere nor goes anywhere. It is neither continuous or separate. It is neither dirty nor clean. It neither increases nor decreases. So as you can see, this explanation of the nature of the universe is better than that proposed by the space scientists. But despite this, the pre-universe state, or what scientists call nothingness, is still obscure and incomprehensible to most of us. Let us put it aside for now and look at what happened at the moment of the formation of the universe. 
the widely accepted theory about the formation of the universe is, however, the theory, the theory is still being questioned, both in its detail and its essential correctness. We can now obtain some insights from this theory and don't have to accept the theory in its entirety. According to the Big Bang, our universe was created somewhere between 10 to 15 billion years ago from a cosmic explosion that threw matter in all directions. Before the explosion, there was no space and no time. Such a state is so removed from anything we know. Even the laws that govern the universe become totally obscure to scientists themselves. And Buddha used the terms unthinkable and inexpressible to describe this state. In fact, this state is beyond our comprehension. Dr. Stan Oldenwald admits, what this means to us may never be fully understood. But the Buddha did not imply that we should not attempt to understand or observe this state of the universe. The method we should use is not to think, that is, through meditation or deep concentration without any wandering thought. In the deep concentration, there will be no obstacles. And at this moment, the true nature of ourselves and the universe come forth. This is a state of enlightenment. So how big was our universe when it was born? According to scientists' conclusion, the size of the universe at that moment was equal to 10 to the power of negative 33 centimeters. That means it is 0 0.00, there are 33 zeros, 1 centimeters. Such a number is so small that it's merely a mathematical concept and can never be understood by our common sense. Let us consider this anal analogy. Suppose the thinnest body hair on our body has a di diameter of 0 0.0. If this pre-universe uh, pre particle can somehow be stored into our thin hair, how many particles can you store across the hair's diameter? What I mean across the diameter, not along the length of the hair. With some simple calculation, you can see that you can store one million of trillions of trillions of particles across a single hair. It is amazing, our infinite universe once contained the same information as that tiny particle did. This information includes everything in the universe, including the, all the galaxies, the past, the present, and the future, including you and me. So it is so amazing. It is more amazing that your single hair can store so many universes across the diameter. So no wonder Buddha Shakyamuni told us, there is no difference between the infinite and the infinite.